Hey, thank you for tuning in. Today we are going to talk about the M60A2. So let's begin. The origins of M60A2 began as the result of an Army Combat Vehicle Committee's report, ARCO for short, in 1958, where it was decided that the future tanks of the US would use guided missiles as a primary form of engaging enemy armor, mirroring the Soviet Union which was also developing vehicles along similar lines. This new gun missile system used an infrared beam rider using a line of sight command guidance system developed by aeronautics under Ford Aerospace. The new system was the rifled XM81 gun launcher, which could fire either a 152mm shape charge heat warhead with a solid 7 inches of penetrating power, as well as HE, white phosphorus, and even an APF SDS long rod round. To engage armor further out, it could use the XM13 ATGM. The whole system was known as the Combat Vehicle Weapon System Shillelagh, although eventually only the missile itself would end up with the name. The logic behind such a gun was fairly straightforward. The whole system weighed approximately half that of the regular M68 105mm gun, and therefore, from a design point of view, in which weight is one of the most important factors in tank development, it was very appealing. The gun system itself also saved weight by using a complete combustible case and primer, thus preventing the need for large brass cases ejected back into the turret. However, the flushing system designed to eject hot debris out of the tube was temperamental, resulting in several serious accidents with ammo cooking off in the breach. With this new missile system as the preferred weapon system of the future, the US began to work on the vehicles to mount it. These would go on to become the M551 Armored Reconnaissance and Airborne Assault Vehicle General Sheridan and the NPT-70, both of which you can find in my previous commentaries. Anyways, in the interim it was decided in August 1961 that the M60 could be retrofitted with this new gun into M60E1 tanks, and a mock-up model was made at Detroit Arsenal later that year. This change would require changes to the gun shield, tracking telescopes, and missile guidance aspects, as well as shuffling around the internal stowage for the larger rounds. This new vehicle concept was then designated as M60E2, with M60E3 being allocated for future production variants, including those with a spotting rifle for the main gun. Further tinkering involved using T95 medium tank turrets on M48 holes. And at least one T95 turret with a short dummy 152mm gun remains at the National Armor and Cavalry Collection in Fort Benning today. It was then questioned, was it not just easier to build a new turret than to convert the current M60 stock turrets? Several proposals and ideas were put forward, but one stood out. A new radical design by Clipper T. Bradley, who served as chief of the Exploratory Development Division at TACOM, and supported by Joseph Williams of the Advisory Commission of the Council of National Defense. This new turret was of an extremely compacted flat design, offering the enemy the lowest possible cross-section while still being a conventionally crude turret. The gunner and loaders sat low in the turret basket, with their heads being almost at the turret ring level, while the commander was located up and behind the main gun, with excellent all-around vision. It offered good protection for the time. The new turret was almost saucer-like in its shape, with only the gun taking up any real volume. However, it did retain the long 105mm gun and utilized a remote weapon station on the turret's back. This vehicle was also revolutionary for featuring several new concepts at the time. The models had ribbed armor on the front and full MBC protection, while others featured all-round cage protection, and even more advanced concepts had a fully working active protection system known as Dash Dot that intercepted incoming rounds and then destroyed them. Despite these technological advances, some of these features would not be implemented onto American tanks for a further 50 years. Anyway, by the 10th of January 1964, four turrets were ready as mock-ups. These were the type A, B, C, and D, and the host vehicle was simply known as XM66. The type B compact turret, which was heavily based on the Clifford Bradley design, showed the most promise and went for further evaluation, to where it received the designation 152mm gun full tracked combat tank M60A1E1 in February 1965. A second vehicle, rediscovered recently by Ed Francis and Rob Kogan, both who you can see on some of my previous videos, uh, was discovered last year and featured the Type B turret with an XM150 152mm L44 gun and a secondary 20mm autocannon. Several of the prototype M60A1E1 were made and tested on the 3rd of July 1965. The next prototype was designated 152mm gun full tracked combat tank M60A1E2 which was then ordered into production. With a limited batch of only 540 vehicles made, these were designated M60A2. 
The M60A2 had a relatively short service career with similar failings to the Sheridan, primarily concerning the missile system. These were never truly rectified, and the doctrine was altered. The M60A2 ended up acting as a force multiplier for units, operating the M60A1s in an overwatch and support role. By 1981, the M60A2 was removed from frontline service, with a few having conventional M60A3 turrets placed on them, others were converted to recovery vehicles. The only mystery left is the name Starship. It doesn't crop up in any formal documents, and yet seems commonly enough accepted to be a name for this vehicle. Reasons for this vary from its space-age technology, saucer-like shape, or even a band from the time. But no definitive answer's been given. If you think you know, drop the answer below in the comments. Sources for this video include R.P. Hunnicutt's published work, Patton, U.S. Armor, July-August edition, 1982, Correspondence for Tatakum, 1960, a book called Homefront Heroes, a biographical dictionary of Americans during wartime, volume 3, and ordnance reports from the Defense Documentation Center. The M60A2 is a super cool tank to finally be able to meet. If you liked this video, like and subscribe, and toss what vehicle you want to see next down in the comments. I'll see you next time.